<laughs> so ev everything everything seen as divine alone now their their selfishness their egoistic desires their sensuous pleasures are sublimated now even if you are eating something sweet even if there are some physical pleasures uh, uh, coming coming to through sense organs even in them they see the devi's prasada they don't indulge through ego or through through bhoga buddhi they don't enjoy them through bhoga buddhi they see them it is a god's blessing alone is flowing through us there is no egoless the experiences they go through without a bhoga buddhi without ego buddhi without ahankara tushti there is no bhoga dushti bhoga tushti there is no ahankara tushti they all are the divine expressions divine manifestations as a leela they see them so in the purified state of mind the worldly objects money and power and pleasures look like yagna only they all look like divine powers manifesting here the ego is melted away the bhoga buddhi is melted away it looks like the like you see the children children also play children also eat when the child eats how people see them it looks so natural you don't see as a bhoga buddhi child dots you see you give any sweet or say something how the child eats you give a chocolate how the child eats a 2 to 3 years old boy or girl how do they eat they eat as if they got a brahmananda in it so even in the sensuous pleasures they so innocently naturally live in that so there is no egoless innocent enjoyments okay therefore in a saintly person even the worldly experiences just express as a divine leela without ego without sensuous pleasures they just spontaneously happen therefore even when you are punishing somebody they see a divine leela so when you are punishing somebody also sattvic people saintly people i am talking bhagwan's leela krishna when he is killing rakshasas there is no hatred in him isn't it the saintly people are divine people or even the gods themselves uh, paramatma himself when he kills asuras there also there is a compassion there is a love there is a divinity there is a leela there is no hatred there is no ego there is no vengeance in it if asuras do see i told you three levels the asuras is totally asura level they don't see anything divine anything sattvic even the respect for elderly people also is again a bhoga buddhi selfish buddhi see even respect to elders is also egoistic in them for asuras if there is nothing holy even the holy activities look like bhoga activity or egoistic activity uh, and the saintly people nothing is undivine and everything looks divine see the difference total contrast for saintly people devatas devata leela bhagwan's leela even the killing asuras si sri krishna married sri krishna also had children ramachandra married but you can see them their marriages is a full of love and compassion it is a leela it is a non egoistic marriages non that means it, they don't indulge in worldly pleasures but it is an expression of their divine love a divine compassion a selfless love is spread through their their marriages their vivah that's why we call them it is a devata devata vivaha is a kalyanam is a vivaha we don't call it a laukika word like a marriage and all it is a divine thing therefore uh, ramachandra shri krishna are certain saintly people are forced to marry uh, due to some uh, due to some reason then they do it as a leela roopa you can see them a selfless one even the acquiring the property spending the property even waging the war ramachandra wages war shri krishna wages war kills the people even in that you can see them a graceful a, a kindly a divine killing a graceful killing there is no vengeance there is no hatred i hope you understand the difference between them when the asuras do even the holy things temples pujas look an aggression you can see some of the some of the these foreign religions even their so called prayers look like aggressiveness even in the temples in the fridays and sundays when they pray afterwards they throw stones and kill people even their worship looks like a war alone ha huh? so cruelty it is very cruel 
hard hearted vengeance and hatred even the religion means only intolerance for them religion means hatred religion means intolerant this is called asuric religion see the difference asuric people are the other extreme if you if you keep this explanation which i am giving under the background then you read this devi one side and nishumba nishumba and chanda mundadi asuras on one side in dumra lochana asuras one side see the asuras outlook nature way of looking way of waging war their interaction their thoughts their feelings the whole thing one side then the devi is totally another is a divine leela even her birth is not out of any selfish desire see even her birth is a graceful blessing her acting is a blessing her beauty is a blessing to the whole humanity all jivas rishis devatas uh, her marriage is a blessing everything looks so graceful and a blessing as a kind hearted compassion it is a divine blessing to the whole universe uh, so the saintly people do the same things but they do it selflessly egolessly even a common man wants to rise to a saintly level he has to transcend this humanistic stage of ego selfish pleasures worldly pleasures sense pleasures mamakara sukha indriya sukha bhoga sukha ahankara he has to melt away and remove his ego purify himself and be merged into the divine leela of devi and devatas therefore see gopikas you can see them they have removed their egos they have removed their sense pleasures they, they gopikas do not have a sense pleasure there <coughs> see the idea of sense pleasure is gone the idea of mamakara sukha is gone idea of ahankara sukha is gone they melt their egos they melt their abhimana ahankara and then they purify themselves then they will become fit to merge into god's leela krishna's leela because it is a leela is a divine blessing so the worldly pleasures also become divine leelas because they are becoming egoless they are free from uh, individual bhoktru buddhi bhokta buddhi but the asuras even the puja looks like very vulgar very aggressive puja looks aggressive call them their god is great and the puja they do the puja celebrations their prayers how they do there is an aggression hatred domination assertive even the puja is a matter of asserting their ego see the difference even the puja is a matter of asserting their ego humiliating others torturing others it why, people that's why some people wonder what is this religion 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 god all of them are very aggressive egoistic hateful intolerant they torture people extremely they are torture in the name of god and it looks what is this all all this is asura for them god means as an asuric behavior asuric nature i think i hope you are, you are understanding the difference between this asuric behavior in the asuric behavior and the divine behavior ha huh? so in asuric behavior even the satvika karma even the puja becomes very hateful and egoistic but whereas a divine devata avataras even the killing of asuras looks like very graceful compassionate out of love without any hatred is very spontaneous and graceful ha huh? see krishna ramachandra they also marry they have children they also acquire property they kill the asuras but in all these things you can see very egoless behavior you can see it is a great blessing even in killing asuras you can see a selflessness you can see a great blessing of god ha huh? see when the same devatas when the saintly people do the worldly activity there is a divine way of doing very compassionate egoless without any hatred more as a blessing to the world ha huh? but the other side asuras you see them even their puja is full of hatred ego frust uh, anger and that you can see so this is the contrast this is the contrast asuric way of doing that is a tamasa and rajasa way of doing here it is a divine way of doing so devi leela is a divine you can see the beauty of devi devi comes as a beauty even the beauty is a divine beauty means the beauty which purifies your mind it doesn't produce bhoga buddhi 
doesn't produce ego buddhi in fact it melts away your ego you see the divine beauty holy beauty uh, our devata beauty you see them shall i tell you openly if you don't mind it if you forgive me it looks very vulgar but i have to tell you just an example we see our uh, devi devatas full of beauty how we see the vig- vigrahas pictures we see them very beauty in the beauty we don't see any selfish or sensuous sensuous bhoga buddhi we see this divine beauty as melting our heart purifying our bhoga buddhi making our sattvic therefore we always see god's beauty goddess beauty as a purifying beauty removes our ego removes our selfishness removes our bhoga buddhi sensuous buddhi we see this way but there are certain people uh, following certain religions for them beauty means only sensuous beauty enjoying destroying because they are full of asura asura buddhi full of hatred our gods they talk of like prostitutes they call them openly i told you sorry for me it is a very apachara it is a papa even to talk the word but that's how you see them in the facebook that means any divine any god they see them only as a selfish sensuous only asura asura buddhi only they see gods and goddesses through asura mind therefore our god's beauty our goddess beauty they look through asura for them what is god godly means hatred vengeance humiliating others persecuting others kidnapping others raping others is god for them for them god means god is as wicked as they people are therefore their religion is full of hatred and wickedness their god also hates and revengeful man they also follow they think revenge and hatred alone is puja their puja their prayers are only throwing stones coming into streets destroying violence killing in all their fridays sundays only killing and murder alone happens so for them only violence hatred alone revenge alone is god revenge alone is worship that means their negative nature alone they call it religion asuratvam alone they call it religion so there is no question of purifying there power and bhoga there is a power revenge hatred and bhoga buddhi only two things are god two things are religion their religion allows them more physical enjoyment more humiliation of others exploiting killing subjugating destroying uh, this is what they call them they call asuric ego egoistic alone is called as a religion hatred is called religion revenge is called religion humiliation rape is called religion because it is an asuric dharma asuric god asuric principles asuric things okay now here i told you the contrast devis you see them now the devatas also marry devatas also have a children devatas also wage war but you can see them graceful there is no ego involved there is no hatred involved everything is divine but in between human beings are there they are they have not risen so high to the level of saintly people and devatas ah uh, and the other people they are not so wicked like these asuras in between human beings are neither so wicked like asuras nor so divine like devatas they are in between means what they categorize the life into two that means they have a little uh, what you call uh, worldly pleasures they have a sensuous pleasures they have little mamakara they have little ego but they keep the ego and worldly pleasures within limits and follow according to dharma only in certain area they enjoy but other area they have a respect and love and egolessness and they surrender see the beauty see the divinity now they don't bring the egoistic pleasures uh, the worldly pleasure buddhi the sensuous buddhi here when you see the goddess see them with a holy see them holy and respectable but where you want to enjoy the pleasures you see something differently so here they categorize and see the two different thing gradually they grow into higher level these are in between manushya i think i have more than necessary elaborated it so that i th- i hope my i communicate i have repeatedly repeated two to three times this points the difference between because hindus have lost this viveka this all religions are same has become a terrible destructive terrible moha terrible murkhatva moha atma vanchana 
it is a highly destruction we have become pervert fellows therefore we fail to see in the last one century or one and a half century we fail to see all these all these differences therefore you we have to see the difference in order to make you understand this difference i am explaining all these things see see the asuric form then come to human form see first is adharmic then come to the dharmic then transcend the dharma and become totally gnani and bhakta totally transcend three things one is asura another is manushya then the devata another thing is adharma is a lowest one madhyama is dharmic then you transcend dharma dharma and become totally saintly ha huh? how beautiful paddhat this is all bhagavad gita says i am not bringing from anywhere you may think that oh you, some people told me abba we have never heard these teachings oh how did you get i am only interpreting i am only relating to your worldly life that's but all these principles you find in bhagavad gita the problem with hindu society is hinduism is bhagavad gita talks of all these principles but bhagavad gita's commentaries our old commentaries traditional commentaries they have explained those principles with the reference to the world situation they are not our modern people are not applying to modern situation principles are there i tell you whatever i am telling they are there already in bhagavad gita i am not tell only thing is i am reapplying to the modern situation this is where it looks new to you ayyo we have never heard this kind of teaching it is true the principles are already there in bhagavad gita in upanishads in veda in bhagavata in mahabharata ramayana everywhere they are there i am only bringing a new light in the sense i am applying into a new context because we are unable to do because our we are brainwashed we were unable to apply to them we are unable to explain to them explain them we are unable to see them relevant to modern context that is the problem with hindu society but all these things what i am told already there in bhagavad gita they are all all of them are there so see asurikna now see the there are certain ideologies economic ideology now everything we can see them a politics we have got the rajarishis the human kings and the asuric kings kings also three type king means administration ruling there are divine kings selflessly ramachandra sri krishna pandavas they ruled how like a divine people selflessly they ruled uh, then the normal human beings have little selfishness but also follow some dharma there is but again asuras for them kingdom means exploit people kill them uh, the, what you call uh, uh, kidnap their women and sell them ah huh? the kingly the king's daughters and wives and they sold in the market oh terrible animals they are the mogal kings you can see them they are animals even worse than animals our cows are better our dogs are better worse than dogs and animals they are so these are all asuras so they just first thing is human beings who go and sell them in the market and just rape them and they call this is their god's word according to the religion they are following it that means religion itself is so asuric religion therefore it tells all asuric acts are deva puja they teach them asuric acts as deva puja therefore they do them sincerely all these asuric work in the name of god in the name of religion because their god also teaches asuric work alone because their god himself is an asura and for them asuric works asuric feelings asuric thoughts alone that you can see in our asuras here uh, here uh, i have just a little deviated but i hope i have explained the point very very important now with this background see this here devataru devi devi roopini and also chandamunda chandamunda sa this kalika devi uh, she appeared devi durga devi uh, uh, ap- reappeared through parvati again and lived in himalayas seeing her extraordinary beauty what these asuras felt see what we see we see our devata roopini we, we have got all devis devi temples are there we do avankara we have a devi pictures in our in our pustakas and we see them devi how devi beautiful devi faces as we see them our mind melts away our mind becomes filled with satvika bhava we see them such a great divine beauty and we feel so immensely happy ego melts away our bhoga buddhi indriya sukha buddhi melts away and we feel very divinely blessed 
so when you see a beauty when you see godly saintly people we see them more respectable lovable adorable we see them they see anything beautiful they see it is enjoyable it is asura buddhi alone they see them therefore they taunt our gods they call them prostitutes they use all kinds of vulgar words and put it in the facebook you can see shumba nishumba chanda chanda munda again coming in the name of modern religions i can see very clearly durga saptashati alone i see in the facebook uh, so only the shamba nishumba these fellows are asuras are coming again coming again in the 1000 years they have been ruling india only these asuras were ruling india and you can see them the way they talk about our gods uh, what else can you see them anything beautiful they want to destroy or they want to indulge in pleasures so that means there is no holy beauty at all for them any beauty is only sense pleasure this is what asura see but we see all beauty is a divine power is divine ha huh? adi adhikara is divine wealth is divine for them wealth is for enjoying ha huh? woman is for destroying or killing and raping that means for them anything good they see only asuric way we see even the normal worldly pleasures we divineize them the real religion purpose of religion is to gradually purify the mind and make even the normal worldly activities of marriage children money earning spending and adhikara all these things divineize them and melt away our ego make you a saintly person a divine person see all this as a leela you also become part of leela this is ultimate goal it won't happen one day it takes some time to grow and learn in between there are different stages gradually we learn stage by stage stage by stage we learn the purify we remove our egos we remove our bhoga buddhi the bhoga buddhi completely goes away i tell you bhoga buddhi completely goes away any bhoga vastu you see them it looks very divine because sense organs are so cool so pleasant sense organs have become all bhoga buddhi melts away that is the saintliness that is the divinity that's why krishna leela uh, gopika or asa leela you can see them it is a compassionate very loving a love full of the ha and then a heart full of love an infinite love it is a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, non sensuous pleasure you can say that. the sensuality is totally melted away the ego melted away you can see them a compassionate infinite love okay that's what it is so we, we see them one is a asura adharmic level then the manushya level then the divine level so gra- the purpose of human life is give up the asuratvam give up the adharmika become dharmika then a stage comes you transcend even dharmika you become totally divine this is the religion religion means this ah so gradually you have to go now we say worldly pleasures raping others kidnapping others and then sell the sell the woman on the streets this is called our god's religion our god told us we call this is religion ah in the name of religion hatred revenge kill them only on the prayer day friday alone people throw stones and kill them and then create all kinds of ruckus on the street riots on the street so riots are their religion kidnapping is religion raping is religion uh, killing their religion now what do you call the hatred revenge intolerance is god okay keeping this in view listen to our shastras i think a word meaning of the shloka you will find there so i want to say what is not in the shloka means what is there deeply in the shloka but simple translation won't give you so i have to give you this explanation it is all coming from our tradition our gurus have given what my gurus told i am just telling you i am nothing telling you new what i learnt received as a blessing of my gurus i am just telling you so this is the beauty of the shastras and this is people should be able to see the difference all religions are not same see the asura and devata we have lost our viveka this is the biggest problem of hinduism therefore we are unable to handle we are also becoming day by day asuras ha unconsciously some of our children are adopting this asuric religion they see that it is great they have got an argument strategies theologies books they write propaganda they do our people are telling yes is true their religion is great asura is great what do you mean that 
and you see how they humiliatingly vulgarly talk about our gods and goddesses so this shows they are asuras what else asuras can do see the same way shumba nishumba is talking ha huh? you can see the facebook these religions talk exactly the shumba nishumba talk so we don't have to compare them with asuras they themselves are demonstrating how asuric they are okay how asuric they are now you see chandamunda sa chandamunda asuras sa devi's beauty extraordinary beauty as we see the beauty how we feel ha ah, our ego melts away mind becomes a pleasant satvik and even our sense pleasures go away ha ah, so if not go away immediately gradually we learn to we learn to gradually to come out of it at least as a sadhaka stage then the siddha stage oh mind becomes immensely joyful you can see the divine beauty so for them the shumba nishumba as they saw they found they become aroused sensually they thought that abba this woman is good for us for our pleasures they immediately went to the to whom shumba nishumba they told what a beautiful girl we have seen them and really you des- like shurpanaka's report to ravana they have reported isn't it even ravana represents this alone this asuric religions asuric religious mindset alone ravana represents he says we have never seen such a beauty now we must go and enjoy then what they say then shumba nishumba immediately send a proposal they send a duta and send a proposal Sh- uh, shumba sends a messenger sugriva is his messenger the sugriva is another sugriva he sends a messenger sugriva means their own their own uh, uh, they, they, what you call their own asuric asuric uh, messenger and uh, see what is the proposal eh hey, you you ask that that lady to marry our shumba nishumba one of them either shumba or nishumba you marry oh we have got wealth we have got kingdom we we have defeated devatas we got lot of these thing you come and live with us okay he proposes a, a marriage proposal he sends with shumba nishumba you see what is the thing now how is devi responds our ordinary hindu girls easily seeing the proposal falling for this jihads that means they have to learn from this devi how to how to behave well most of these girls they think of only personal family personal marriage my personally my boyfriend loves me that is enough that means too much of vyashti drushti vyashti dharma personally individualistic they are becoming in fact individualism itself is adharma our shastra told you marry not for your individual purpose you have a children you get attracted to a boy and to so if you give the freedom people will become too individualistic destroy the national culture social culture humanistic culture divine culture they will become animals or they follow these animalistic religions that's why all these people love animalistic religions because animalistic religions give the animal pleasures alone as a divine as, as a religion animal pleasure alone as a religion there is no elevation there is no purification in them there is no divine there is no hatred see these are all normal human weaknesses hatred pleasure worldly pleasure ego isn't it hatred ego domination worldly pleasure sense pleasure now their religion teaches this alone is religion worldly pleasures kidnap rape and subjugate people kill them torture them and exploit money and live and live indulge in worldly pleasure this is religion this is our god says now god is only confirming your animality in you because god himself is an animalistic god so for that religion looks very attractive to ordinary people isn't it for a school boy don't go to school don't do homework andre this looks very attractive isn't it don't go to school or don't do homework if teacher ask you you talk against him or threaten him oh you enjoy and go to watch the film and then immediately you get a degree without any hard work and you get a job and then again rag anybody and then if boss comes go and kill him that's all like they did it in france this is what is a religion then you have got a leaders to support you have got a people to support they say that oh you are a great man and this fellow right from the college days becomes a villain and there is a communism is a really is a religion which supports this kind such kind of villains oh you become a great hero great mahatma you will become okay 
there are certain religion there are certain ideologies uh, they they encourage a villain alone as a great man now they 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 condemn religion because religion hinduism because hinduism requires selflessness purification uh, tapas it requires therefore it looks very bad for them isn't it it looks very inhuman it is anti human theirs is a very human huh their animalism looks as a human and our divine looks as an animal ah because this is what exactly shunda munda the girls easily fall because their samskara their culture their education also is a animal making education they receive they are not supposed to listen to parents because in the education they told that see coming out of the control of the parents is your first dharma do as you like it support the villainic religions and support the jihadi boys go with them that is a great religion they teach now these people are brainwashed to become animals they love to become prostitutes because the woman ke prostitution is a great thing than any any divine any purification any selflessness uh, becoming a good thing is all bad this animality is great animalism is great for them so this because this is a shumba ni shumba is great not devi not durga durga looks like very selfish so that's why they told mahishasura is great not devi you know what they say devi is not great ah uh, devi is fascist mahishasura is great ah from this it is very clear what they are therefore this shumba nishumba sends a marriage proposal you know what she says stri ratna bhutam tvam devi loke manyamahe she says that oh you are so beautiful come and marry one of these she is a devi this fellow doesn't recognize a devi needs to be respected and loved and served when you do puja your mind will be purified your life will be much better you have got other people to marry and live why this thing see the fellow he talks how he behaves it then rishi says then you see what is her reply she is not like our modern girls who devi how devi she says you no know, you reply coolly she replies because she is a divine power she came in a human form in a woman form but basically she is a devata swarupini she is a devata rupini so you she says you see i have taken a vow the devi sends a, a listening to the marriage proposal from the sent from the uh, shumba nishumba she replies see her reply she is not like our modern girls uh, falling for jihadi jihads jihadis see i have taken a vow that whoever defeats me in the war he alone can marry me come on see very cleverly she trapping she is trapping them she is laying a trap putting a condition this requires a cleverness in any war you require a strategy hindus are too poor in strategies in fact they have no strategies at all they they see others others cunning strategy as a divine gift they see that mahatma gandhi told the cunning strategy as uh, of of jinna as a very divine gift to hindus i think you can't be there can't be a better fool greater fool than him i think all the fools in india should feel happy that we are not as fool as him okay even the most foolish person will at least feel happy that i have not become so foolish like him you see she puts a trap to them ah huh? devi lays a trap lays a condition so that that fellow will fall for it and she will immediately defeat them. so we require a strategy so this here we have to learn one more thing strategy is also a dharma is adhyatmikata we think that no no we should not be cunning we should not be strategic for the wicked fellows strategy is a dharma okay strategy is holy unstrategic is only foolishness it is not bhakti it is not gnanam it is not vairagyam uh, it is a, it is a murkhata it is a undivine it is an animalistic a wicked fellow comes you require a strategy strategy also see as a holy you pray to goddess goddess gives you strategy goddess herself followed the strategy see strategy is divine strategy satvik people holy people follow the strategy okay even sri krishna followed the strategy ramachandra followed the strategy strategies are divine why do you think strategy is cunningness 
why do you string strategy is negatively and egoistic of course you can be have a negative strategy also egoistic strategy there will be two ways strategy can be egoistic and selfish strategy can be divine and a kindly compassionate and blessing to the larger interest in the larger interest of humanity okay we require a positive strategies good strategies noble strategies strategies to defeat the wicked people and to do the uh, and and bless the whole world doing good to the whole world strategy also divine don't consider when as a sanyasi talking strategy oh swami ji what is this you should say everything is brahman even rakshasas are Bam brahman when they rape you this is also god you should say that god, why do you talk of strategy and defeating the asuras uh, and following why do you, you see these idiots come and teach me okay now you understand <laughs> these fools come and teach me so the, 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 these arrogance of hindus have gone to such an extent that uh, any divine teaching looks wrong they have become half 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 jihadis these fellows have become they don't want to learn hinduism they think their murkhatvam is better than hinduism their murkhatvam is better than hinduism better than our rishi's teaching better than bhagavad gita better than upanishads i don't know i think even god cannot teach them they, they need to be kicked if god comes this time if they only kick these these idiotic hindus huh? because they, they, they are utter fools they don't, don't even understand sri sri krishna taught the strategies when duryodhana came you know see them duryodhana came arjuna came seeking sri krishna's help in the war you know the mahabharata even it's an extraordinary beauty you see them krishna was very relaxed very compassionate he wanted to help duryodhana as well as arjuna see how he designed a strategy strategy is divine if it done with a selflessly for the larger interest of the society never never hesitate to make strategy hindus are failing to think strategically okay duryodhana comes krishna come both of them come afternoon after food krishna was resting for a short while as he wakes up he sees arjuna oh he says oh oh arjuna uh, ba, what you say that oh my brother in law when did you come then again then duryodhana was sitting this side oh turns this side oh duryodhana also is here oh i'm very happy to see come on what can i do for you they sought help uh, krishna's help in the war now you know how strategically krishna replied you all know it i don't have to repeat it he he himself went to the side of arjuna ha ah. if he, if he did not have the strategy arjuna would have been defeated and duryodhana would have won this is what our gurus of 20th century gurus have been doing they made they have no strategy utter foolishness they talk of everything is brahman and duryodhana becomes brahman humiliation of pandavas becomes brahman uh, our jihad becomes brahman and our our raping our our women becomes brahman and they this is all utter foolishness in the name of religion people should be ashamed to call themselves gurus i tell you they should feel ashamed to call themselves gurus and teach this kind of nonsense anyway i am very blunt i told you already those who want to listen listen otherwise forgive me and leave me if you consider me as a fool leave me you you learn if they can help you then you learn <laughs> so she she laid a strategy to this shumba nishumba she says who defeats me see what can i do i have already taken a vow that whoever defeats defeats me in war i shall i shall marry that fellow come on wage the war then these fellows got angry ha huh? iga next shloka this shumba nishumba became terribly angry she is telling me she is challenging me for war i asked her to come and marry me that's all you have to surrender that means we are jihadis we kidnap you and then we just we just sell you for anybody keep the prostitutes and sell you to anybody you have to surrender to our jihadis how dare you talk of all dharma and rule and all that then he calls the dhumra lochana in shashto adhyaya see the next chapter he calls the senadipati dhumra lochana a hey, dhumra lochana go and teach lesson to this girl don't even wage the war catch hold of her by her hair and drag her on the street like draupadi was dragged drag her on the street and bring her we will make her uh, put her in our antapura that's all 
not even marriage we will keep her here see the arrogant this is exactly modern religions the, the 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 foreign religions are doing this is what exactly tena agnyapta stata shigram sada iga dhumra lochana goes oh devi is a strategic powerful divine see strength is goddess strength is devata strategy is devata see there are two ways there is your your jeevas jeevas confidence also gives some strength you see jeevas of two types one is having feeling inferiority complex fear and inferiority other people are very egoistic and confident see jeevas ego and confidence also gives them some strength some aggression it gives you compared to the person who is meek humble fearful inferiority complex compared to the person who is meek humble frightened a frightened person cannot 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 bring up courage into him cannot call call his courage ah uh, cannot bring out his courage he cannot feel the courage he feels afraid but an egoistic fellow feels more courage more strong more aggressiveness you see if you surrender to god your power your energy your aggression will be aggression means in a positive sense your boldness your bravery will be 100 times more okay we think that sir uh, shall i tell you time is time is running short okay i'll any anyway, i'll tell you i went to somebody's house i used to go to the bhiksha when i was in hyderabad they say these modern asuras are coming they are brahmana salon now that girl says she is a college going girl i was going to bhiksha for bhiksha to their house the girl tells me her friends friends means her relatives only they all becoming like asuras they are becoming like nastikas now they try, not only they are nastika they try to brainwash this girl why you see don't believe in god you will pass exam he says when you set aside your god you can work hard and pass the exam you believe in god you will fail because you will become weak they say you see if you surrender to god you become weak but if you but if you take your self courage set aside god become atheist you will have a lot of courage with courage you will win she was she was she was disturbed and she says earlier i had a, and they say what is idol idol is we put the idol what these are brahmanas their own relatives now this is the way they talk like all this is a tremendous westernization is going on hindu gurus are sleeping very kumbhakarna sleeping after kumbhakarna they alone are there our hindu gurus okay so then i told what is this all happening i told call them i'll talk to them call them i'll talk to them they called just then they telephoned within half an hour they came then i tried to talk to them uh, they couldn't answer then in right in front of them i told the girl see don't worry there is one is three levels are there one is human weakness human fear a ma human being feels frightened inferiority compared to that person when he feels his ego asserts the ego he feels more confident okay when he asserts his ego he feels definitely more aggression more power is there but there is a still higher power surrendering to god means weakening not weakening surrendering to god doesn't mean losing your confidence note this point surrendering to god doesn't mean losing your confidence what a nastika can bring confidence what a nastika can bring that forcefulness energy into him that will be 100 times more that energy that confidence will be 100 times more if you surrender to god okay surrender doesn't mean blocking away your confidence or developing a inferiority complex they, because they are unable to understand what is surrender they think slavery is equal to surrender the human beings when they are enslaved by these moguls and britishers uh, moguls and britishers we enslaved us we have also surrendered they are thinking surrender means this kind of slavery is surrender surrender to god or goddess is not this way you have a human confidence whatever degree of human confidence and atheist confidence you have 100 times more greater confidence you have if you surrender to god 
बिकॉज गॉड्स स्ट्रेंथ फ्लोज थ्रू यू मोर कॉन्फिडेंस मोर ब्रेवरी मोर स्ट्रेंथ दैट इज डिविनिटी दैट इज रियल सरेंडर ओके देर फोर यू विल गेट मोर करेज मोर स्ट्रेंथ एंड ऑल्सो स्ट्रैटेजिकल थिंकिंग युअर ब्रेन ऑल्सो वर्क्स मोर शार्पली मोर इंटेलिजेंटली दैट इज सरेंडर सरेंडर मीन्स वॉट एवर यू हैव गॉट द ह्यूमन स्ट्रेंथ ह्यूमन नॉलेज ह्यूमन पवर दैट दैट विल बिकम ए चैनल फॉर हायर पवर टू फ्लो थ्रू यू दैट इज सरेंडर इट डजेंट मीन अंडर माइनिंग युअर कॉन्फिडेंस इज नॉट सरेंडर डबलिंग युअर कॉन्फिडेंस इन टू थाउजेंड फोल्ड इनक्रीजिंग युअर कॉन्फिडेंस इन हंड्रेड फोल्ड इज कॉल्ड सरेंडर यू अंडरस्टैंड वाट इज दीक्षा वाट इज सरेंडर they may look gentle but inwardly they are highly strong like a steel they are like steel like vajram like a diamond inner mind is they may look very humble soft spoken by surrendering to god but they have surrendered the humanness surrendering human being human limitation to god doesn't mean further weakening it means strengthening hundredfold it is the godly energy flowing through your eyes and ears and muscles and mind and will power your will power is governed by ishwara's energy you become further strong if you don't understand this basic concept of religion and surrender and all that this asuric strength looks greater to you that is the biggest problem of hindus okay see the devi strength ha huh. this asuras came really okay The Dhumra Lochana was sent by Shumba Nishumba. He came here. You know what Dhumra Lochana? As the Dhumra Lochana came, she told what she did. Huh? She told huh? That's all. Huh? Kara, we call them. Hmm. And the hell. That's all. That fellow got killed. She had so much of power. Huh? The divine power. That fellow easily got killed. That's all. Next to what happened? He got further angry. He told, "Go and forcibly bring her back." Then the Chanda Munda came. See the seventh chapter. Chanda Munda come. They, she she also kills them very easily because, as I told you, divine energy kills. But even in that killing, not out of hatred, not out of vengeance, not out of uh, uh, aggression. They think aggression is religion. No. you can see them ramachandra swar pandava swar shri krishna swar it is a divine leela it is a divine leela out of compassion you see them there is no hatred in it but still there is a tremendous energy and the strategy is there energy is there and also fighting spirit is there the spirit is much stronger you can see she is a leela matram as a sportively she killed those rakshasas rakshasas thought that they are more powerful but these fellows cannot understand devi's strength okay devi's strength are the strength of the all bhaktas all saintly people who worship goddess they also get that strength and through that because they allow the devi's strength flow through them one or two points you have to remember <clears throat> i think not now i will i'll tell later now chanda munda also were also killed easily in the 7th chapter there is nothing much but she uses a strategy each time see she uses a strategy each time parakrama is divine power note we have we think that in parakrama there is ego and there is no divinity and in strategy there is no divinity this is what today's talk i am telling you in div- in strategy there is divinity in parakrama also there can be divinity okay in parakrama also there is egoless in strategy also there is egoless there is a divine blessing you pray to god or goddess she will give you energy strength and give you strategic mind and also valor parakrama valor so that valor flows through you and you can defeat all the wicked people they have this valor and strategy but that is a human strategy out of ego out of frustration all this but here it is a divine one therefore hindus need parakrama strategy strength unity divine power and everything okay now there is any rakta bija asura i think time is up uh, today what day is today 8th i think we have two more days i think i can finish i can finish last there is only devi winning and devi stuti is there that i can tell you in briefly so i think uh, tomorrow we will we will discuss them uh, 
asuras also have a tapobala rakta bija this rakta bija story also a few points one or two points we need to learn i think i'll i'll explain to them tomorrow okay om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om tat sat